like to call to order the City of Newport Beach Planning Commission for Thursday, December 8th, 2016. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible. Roll call. All commissioners present with the exception of commissioners Lawler and Hilgren who are excused this evening. Next item is public comments. Public comments are invited on non-agenda items generally considered to be within the subject matter jurisdiction of the Planning Commission. Speakers must limit their comments to three minutes. Before speaking, please state your name for the record and print your name on the blue forms provided at the podium. Any public comments? Uh, next item is request for continuances. Chair Kramer, item number four, the villas at Fashion Island conditional use permit. The applicant has requested this item be um, continued tonight to a date to be determined. The item will be um, re-noticed for a future meeting. We would like a motion of the commission to accept this continuance. Make the motion. I'll make that motion. Okay, Commissioner Ketty made the motion. Um, I'll second. Um, let's vote. Motion carries 5 0. Next item uh, consent items, the minutes of November 17th, 2016. I'll make a motion, Mr. Chairman, with the uh, addition of uh, Mr. Mosier's corrections. Is there a second? I'll second it. Um, I'll open it up to public uh, comment. Any public comment? Do you have anything? Okay. Um, let's call for vote. Motion carries 4-1 with Commissioner Zach abstaining. Okay, next item, uh, public hearing items, item number two, Davis modification permit, PA 2016-180. Staff, do you have a presentation? Commissioner, I'd like to introduce you to one of our um, new planners. That's not new. He's been here over a year, yet, actually, but tonight is his first presentation to the Planning Commission. This is the Planning Technician, David Lee. So I'll turn it over to David. Thank you, Brenda. Uh, good evening, uh, commissioners. Tonight's um, project is a uh, modification permit to the Davis residence for an addition uh, located at 2912 Broad Street. The subject property is located in the Newport Heights neighborhood, um, located between Santa Ana Avenue and San Bernardino Avenue. The existing residence was constructed first in 1936. Um, the zoning for the subject property is single unit residential, R1, and the general plan designation is single unit residential detached. As you can see from the map, the subject property is fully surrounded by other single family residences. There are non-conforming issues with the existing residence. Um, it is non-conforming due to the encroachment into the side setback, as well as a detached garage that is non-conforming due to the substandard interior parking dimensions, as well as encroachment into the rear end uh, side setbacks, which I'll demonstrate in the next few slides. So this is the existing site plan. Uh, as you can see, there's an existing 1,344 square foot residence in the front of the property, and a detached 292 square foot um, garage located in the rear. The green line represents the property line, and it might be hard to see, but the red line shows this required setbacks. There's a 20 foot front setback required, um, four foot side setbacks, and five foot rear setbacks required. The areas in yellow are the areas of non-conforming um, uh, structures. Um, as you can see in the residential, as in the existing residence, there is a one foot, two inch encroachment into the required four, uh, four foot setback. The existing garage is non-conforming due to the interior dimensions. It provides 15 feet, six inches wide by 17 feet, six inches deep 
while the zoning code requires 20 feet by 20 feet. And as you can see with the yellow highlight on the garage, it encroaches fully into the five foot rear setback and fully into the four foot side setback. Another issue with this uh, lot is that the, um, although the garage is located in the rear of the property, the curb cut comes from Broad Street and the vehicular access is only accessible from the front as there's no garage door in the rear. As you can see from this picture, the red barn structure is the existing garage. It is fully encroaching into the setback all the way up to the property line. And from this picture, you can see that there's no garage door and the access is not able to be taken from the rear alley. So the applicant is proposing to uh, demolish the existing non-forming garage and replace it with a new two-car garage, 20 feet by 20 feet, which is code compliant, add a new master bedroom and a new kitchen. The total addition is 1,116 square feet, which is a 68% addition to the property. Uh, the zoning code allows for an addition to exceed 50% and go up to as much as 75% with a modification permit that is reviewed by the Planning Commission. Again, the green line and the red line represent the property line and the setbacks. With the new proposed site plan, you can see that there will be, remain the non-conforming wall on the right side of the house. That was one foot two encroachment. But if you look at the rear, the garage uh, now is conforming uh, not only in dimension but as well as setbacks as it will pr uh, provide a five foot clear rear setback and a four foot clear side setback. And now the alley access will be, be able to be taken from the rear alley. Just quickly to go over the development standards, um, is we conforming to all the setback standards except for the um, mentioned wall on the right side. The height will not be extending above the what's existing today, which is nine feet, 19 feet, nine inches, 10 feet, close to 10 feet less than the allowed 29 feet. Uh, the floor area limit um, is, they're building one, like close to one third of what could be ma built maximum there. And as I mentioned before, the parking will be brought into conformance. Here are the, uh, some renderings. As you can see from uh, this picture that the, the view from the front will be almost identical to the existing home today as they really want to retain the traditional character of the home. The view from the side, um, the addition will match the architectural features of the existing home that they have. They're also replicating the old barn structure um, in their new garage. And here, the view, from the, the view from the rear, you can see that it's a one-story addition and that there's gonna be access that has to be taken off from the garage. So the staff is recommending approval uh, to the application and has found these facts in support of findings. One is that due to structural reasons, relocating the encroaching wall would lead to the complete demolition of the structure. I believe the applicant can uh, touch further on that fact. Uh, the proposed areas of addition will comply with the applicable zoning standards as we discussed. The structure has existed since 1936 and it has not been detrimental to the neighborhood. And ultimately, the addition will retain the traditional character of the home while improving livability and functionality. Uh, therefore, uh, staff is recommending the commission to adopt the resolution mo uh, approving modification permit number MD 2016 016. I'm available, I'm available for any questions, and I believe the applicant has a quick uh, presentation. Good evening, commissioners. Thank you, David. Appreciate your efforts on our behalf so far. Uh, Stephen and Elizabeth Davis, the owners of 2912 Broad Street, re recently purchased the home and had fallen in love with the charm and the character of both the existing house and the surrounding neighborhood. The intent with the remodel was to maintain and preserve as much of the 1936 vintage structure as we could, even so far as holding on to the 1911 vintage barn in the back. We realized that that wasn't going to be possible, uh, and add the necessary ground floor living space that they needed uh, to live in the house successfully through their retirement years. So while charming, the house lacks that ground floor living space that they need and the compliant two-car garage. Uh, as staff explained, the garage is too small and only accessible from the non-conforming curb cut on broad, and our proposed design uh, corrects this major deficiency and provides the Davises with the ground floor living space that they sorely need in an appropriate and we think neighborhood compatible manner. 
In fact, when we began the design for the project, we met with Director Kim Brandt and the Deputy Director Brenda Wisnowski on a couple of occasions to strategize and refine a good solution for the Davis's needs. And the project before you tonight represents the results of those meetings. And we're confident it's the appropriate solution. And we know staff feels likewise. We expect the commissioners will feel likewise as well. And for this reason and all those already cited in the staff's report, we ask for your support this evening. If you have questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? I do. Go ahead. Tell, me, tell us again how the access to the garage will be. Okay, access to the garage will be from the alley behind the property uh, with the garage at the 10-foot setback, so there'll be a 10-foot driveway between the alley and the garage. Currently, the access is off of Broad that drives down a long driveway to the back. Okay. So that gate out in front will be removed or remain? or The gate out in front on Broad Street? Correct. Yeah, the gate out in front on Broad Street is to remain. All right, but no driveway access. So you're going to remove the curb cut correct that's one of the restrictions we'll have to come in and do a new cur uh, new curb and gutter along the front there i applaud the um, character of the design and remodel uh i'm curious there's a giant pepper tree in the front yard that can already remain yes absolutely okay good thank you you're welcome any other questions question of staff but is that the right time go ahead okay um so the setbacks in this area do they actually uh post date the construction of the house is that why because we, we have a i live in newport heights and we've got lots of um deficiencies especially in the older home so I, I i'm very aware of the 20 feet in the front four in the side in my neighborhood we don't have an alley so i think i'm 15 foot setback to the back property line but where there's an alley it's five i'm just wondering the history of these uh, setbacks it's more informational so as david uh, mentioned the house was built in 1936. we've not done the research to see what the setbacks were at that time but it appears that perhaps the setbacks were similar to what they are today I and mean, there is an encroachment of a little over a foot but perhaps that was just a construction error during the the times yeah. so it, i would guess the setbacks aren't very different today than they, than they were at that time okay uh, just real quickly, in my neighborhood, we have issues with fences, with people building and finding out that they're not surveying the fences, and the back property line is not where the fence is. Uh, and so that issue is, is one. Um, okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, is there a motion? Oh, excuse me. Public comments, I should say. Sorry. Um, Okay, before we do that, let's do a report of ex parte communications. Uh, I did not meet with uh, or had any interaction with the applicant. Did you, Commissioner Zach? No, I didn't have any interaction with the Nor did I, nor did I. Likewise, I did not. None here. Uh, let's open up the public hearing. Um, general public comments. Please come forward. All right, as I suspected, there are none. Um, public comments closed. Uh, bring it back to the commission. Is there a motion? Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we approve a modification permit number MD2016. Um, I think it's a great project, and I think it's a win-win for the city and for the applicant. And um, I'm thankful for their hard work and the city's hard work. And Mr. Lee, on a good presentation, and welcome to the team. I'll second that and, and commend you on maintaining that character. It's a very charming looking house. I hope you can keep the siding off the old barn. Reuse it. Any other comments? If not, call it a vote. I have asked the contractor to preserve that. Motion carries 5 0. Congrats. Next Thank item is item number three, Jan's Health Bar Conditional Use Permit, PA 2016-141. Staff, do you have a presentation? Good evening, commissioners. This application is a use permit to establish an eating and drinking facility um, at 3021 East Coast Highway. 
The property is located in Corona del Mar and shares a parking lot with the Smart and Final Grocery Store. Other uses in the center include two restaurants, a Verizon retail store, a dry cleaners, and a fitness facility, which is expected to open in February. The subject tenant space was previously occupied by a bank. The property is within the Corridor Commercial Zoning District and is surrounded by both commercial and residential zoning districts and uses. The establishment of the restaurant requires approval of a minor use permit due to its proximity to residential zones. The restaurant also requires a parking waiver, uh, which requires a conditional use permit, a parking waiver of four spaces to accommodate 410 square feet of net public area. The parking on site is legal non-conforming. There are four existing waivers on the property. The subject space is located adjacent to Orange Theory Fitness facing Coast Highway and Smart and Final. There are 71 parking sp shared parking spaces on site, which as I mentioned is non-conforming. The restaurant is proposed to be located in a 1,243 square foot space with 400 410 square feet of net public area and up to eight employees on site at one given time. There's no alcohol, late hours, or outdoor dining proposed. The floor plan consists of an order counter, restrooms, and a dining area that can be accessed by customers. There are four parking waivers existing at the property, <coughs> excuse me, the most recent of which was approved by the Planning Commission in October for Orange Theory Fitness. This proposed eating and drinking establishment requires parking at a rate of one space per 50 square feet of net public area due to the quick service and takeout operating characteristics. A parking count was conducted on a Thursday and Saturday in August of this year. At that time, there were two vacant spaces at the center, including the Orange Theory Fitness um, and the subject property. The parking count included parking on the immediately surrounding streets and determined that peak parking demand times for the center were at midday. Not included in the count is a municipal lot in the, on Bayside Drive with 53 parking spaces. Staff has included a recommended condition of approval that the applicant purchase annual parking permits for employees, which will allow them to park in this lot um, and would constitute a parking management plan. And with that, staff recommends approval of the project subject to conditions. The applicant is here, and I can also answer any questions that you have. Does the applicant have a presentation? Is, <laughs> she's Would you like she's to come there. up and just say something? Yeah. Good evening. Uh, my name is Poppy. Uh, Jans has been, I'm the owner of Jans. Jans has been in business since 1972, so over 43 years. Um, we started in Huntington Beach in the back of a surf shop serving tuna avocado sandwiches and peanut butter date shakes, still some of our most popular items. Um, I haven't had dinner yet, so did you bring any of that? <laughs> I know, I was thinking about that. Um, so we serve healthy, fresh food in a very simple manner. Nothing fancy, just straightforward. I think our concept would be a great addition for the CDM neighborhood and the Newport Beach community at large. This would be my fourth location. I have Huntington. Um, I acquired Jan's uh, seven years ago from Jan. And so I took over Huntington. Then a few years later, I opened East Side Costa Mesa. And then uh, five months ago, I opened Laguna Beach. Um, so. We also get involved with the schools and the neighborhoods, but Jans itself creates its own community. We have a following and a nice neighborhood vibe. Um, fun fact, Jans was my first job when I was in high school. I worked for her for a few years, then went to college and had my own career, and then she approached me about 10 years ago and asked if I wanted to come full circle and buy it from her. So. I have a true passion for the product and kind of the vibe that it creates in each community that I've been fortunate enough to come into. So that's that. Thanks, you guys. Fantastic. Thank you. Any questions of staff or the applicant? You may want to stay up at the mic. Yeah. Commissioner Ketting. Yes. Um, nice presentation. Glad to see you're not your first shot. My biggest question is this center 
It's 73 cars under standard. Why would you think that's a good location if your customers can't park there? Let me say this, 70, almost 70% in my three locations of our uh, business is takeout. So it's a in and out. I mean, in this location alone, I think I have 12 or 14 seats. It's really about the takeout product. And so um, even in Huntington Beach on Main Street, if you can believe it, I have it's even a larger uh, parking challenge than this. So for me, uh, in and out is, is basically what I need. I have seven spots in Huntington, and there's multiple retailers. So it hasn't been a deterrent. And in addition to that, our business complements the surrounding businesses. So you're, you've, been, you've picked up dry cleaning, you've worked out, and you go to Jan's. Or you're walking, you go to Jan's, and then you go work out. So it, it seems to complement the other business, businesses in which it surrounds. And what are your thoughts on the condition that eight employees have to take out a parking um, permit? The annual parking permit? At the, you know, four blocks away. I guess they're healthy. They can walk the four blocks. <laughs> well, at all of my locations as well, although it's not permitted, but they do have to park off-site because at all my locations, parking has, is limited. So I, I don't see it. And I will be, you know, taking care of the permit for my employees. All right, thank you. You got it. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, on that same vein, I guess um, on the parking, when you gave your presentation, you said we're, we're going to allow eight, them to get eight parking passes at the lot. I mean, this is a condition of approval that they have to do this, correct? That's correct. Right. And so how this goes back to the Gilson's deal a little bit where they had parking issues up there and they were doing remote parking and we conditioned that how, how do we in, enforce that how do we know that they're going to be parking down there um so at first of course um it would be a condition of their tenant improvement park uh building permit to make sure that they did in fact purchase their employee parking permits um beyond that um, we could check to make sure each year that they are purchasing their permits um, through finance and make sure that they uh, did exact did actually purchase them from the finance department um, and beyond that if there were ever any complaints or code enforcement issues we would look into that and make sure that the applicant did in fact purchase those permits okay um, I think it's a great product I've heard of it before and uh, and I'm gonna support it and I hope you're successful but the parking thing is an issue is brought up by other commissioners so it's uh, imperative that you get your folks to park down in that lot it's there for your use get your permit Make sure they use it. Thank you. A staff question. How many stalls are committed in Bayside parking lot for permitted uses? I mean, are we going to oversell that and then have a problem? No public parking. We don't have a full comprehensive list. We do have a, a list of a few that we do know have been committed. I don't have an exact number for you. Um, staff has visited the lot and has just observed that it's not fully utilized at all times. Um, however, moving forward, we are planning to definitely keep track a little bit better. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Um, thank you for now. Um, report of ex parte communications. I've had no communication with the applicant. Commissioner Zach? I've had none. None for me. Likewise? Nope. Okay, um, open the public hearing, general public comments. Please come forward. Uh, Chair Kramer and members of the commission, my name is Jim Mosier. Uh, just for clarification, this has come up before, but the item here about the eight annual parking permits, do, do those still go with people? So that only one person can use those, or are those, if we, arranged a system where those are interchangeable so eight employees at any time can use them. Thank you. Um, each, each permit would be assigned to a specific car. Um, so each employee would need their own parking permit. If an employee were to quit or to stop working at that establishment um, before the year is over, the permit could be transferred to another employee in their vehicle.
Okay. Um, we'll close the public hearing. Um, bring it back to the commission. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion for approval of this use. Um, I don't have all my paperwork in front of me, but yeah, 2000. PA 2016-141. Yeah, PA 2016-141. There's a second. Second. All right. Any further discussion? Call for vote. Motion carries 5-0. Congratulations. I live right around the corner, so I'll probably be down there all the time. Next item, uh, item number five, since item number four, the villas was continued. Um, Newport Beach Sustainability Plan, PA 2016-120. The commission received a detailed report at your last meeting regarding the sustainability plan and the request of the commission at that time was to bring it back this evening. So I'm happy to give you any other um, background, um, but I will say that the reason that we're coming from the Planning Commission is for um, you to provide any comments or, or feedback to the City Council before they consider review of the, of the plan itself. Um, Nancy Gardner, um, the um, author of the plan, is also here this evening. Is there any further presentation or not? I'd be happy to provide you some more background if you <laughs> wish. Um, you did receive a presentation at your last meeting. I was expecting like some sort of high-tech video presentation, but why don't if you, not, what, I guess we'll just settle for, for Mayor Gardner. Why don't you give a little overview? Um, Commissioner uh, Zach wasn't here, so it might help him and remind me, <laughs> even though I, I have comments all over this thing. So the sustainability plan um, was developed by a group of citizens and presented to the city council earlier this year as a, a plan that would basically provide um, a starting point for the community to um, show their commitment to sustainability. It identifies um, um, ideas, some of which we're already doing, some of which would be new, that would um, kind of put us in that direction. It's mainly focused on city operations but also has some ideas for the um, private community. In the back of the staff report, there is a matrix that shows a list of some of the concepts that are in the plan, many of which, as I mentioned, we're already doing. Um, so the, the impact of the plan will really depend on how the council wants to move forward with it. Um, from a, a planning standpoint, um, the question could be um, whether or not the, um, wh where the doc document should go from here. Should we um, take a step back and consider further policy development to help reinforce the plan? And in that vein, perhaps it could be um, considered when we do our next general plan update. Or another look could be would we want to be a little bit more aggressive and develop an, an actual action plan to say, okay, here is the plan, now let's develop an action plan for actually implementing it. Because the last thing we want anything to happen is to, to adopt a plan that just sits on the shelf. So. Um, there's just a few for thought. Okay. Well, here's how I'd like to pr proceed. Um, um, it's a little bit different than a typical um, item before the Planning Commission, but um, I think uh, we've had a, a chance to, to review the document. Um, I know, Commissioner Ketting, you have notes. I have, I have some comments. So I think maybe we should uh, do that. I think um, uh, former Mayor Gardner could come up and then participate kind of in a, a question and answer period. I think that may make sense. And uh, then I think at the end, um, I think it would be appropriate to sort of go through the questions um, and the parameters that are on page four of the staff report kind of as a commission, answer those, and then, um, uh, and then go from there if there's any direction um, or uh, conclusions that, that we can make. So does that sound? Like a good process? Sure. Okay. Kick it off. All right. So um, I guess I'll start. Um, most, of, I, most of us have experience with, with real estate development. Um, and uh, we've seen a whole host of um, increased regulations you know, from the state of California 
uh, particularly over the last couple of years, Title 24 um, in particular, um, which have and various green building uh, initiatives that have uh, 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 done. You know, it's kind of a double-edged sword. They've um, not only you know, do they substantially increase, oftentimes um, the construction costs for various projects. Um, they also cause uh, uh, you know additional time in order for projects to be constructed. Uh, so the, there's additional regulations that um, that have increased both costs and time of, of many projects. Uh, I've personally I've been on the receiving end of that, um, and it's uh, uh, it's always a challenge um, to try to maintain project budgets and and timelines and all these different things uh, with these additional regulations. So. Um, I think we always have to be looking at it, you know, from perspective of, of uh, you know, so a, ho a holistic perspective that includes um, the developer, because the developer is the one that has to usually pay for for these things. So, um, and oftentimes um, there's a lot of hidden costs, um, you know, whether it's you know uh, electrical or or whatnot, um, and we've seen. Um, Substantial increases just over the last couple of years because of the these regulations. So, I want to be careful that um, even though, of course, the intent of the sustainability uh, program here is laudable, um, I think we need to make sure that uh, that it doesn't create undue burden for uh, for developers because those costs are always passed on to the to the end user whether it's a residential you know uh, project a commercial um, it's uh, always it increases the cost uh, you know for the end user and those are the end users are are, are uh, residents here in Newport Beach so um, so with that I, I have a couple comments just brief ones um, I think overall it's a it's a it's a it's a good um, uh, pathway here um, under the the building and development section section number two um, uh, one of the uh, items is encourage staff members to become lead accredited or the equivalent there's a di there's a couple different mentions of lead in here um, under the same section down below you know the lead buildings um, as some may know or may not know, LEED is actually a for-profit company um, that actually makes, uh, uh, that has tended to, to dominate this, uh, uh, this sector. Uh, there's, there's other ways to have uh, uh, a green building or green initiatives besides um, uh, LEED. So I would be concerned about uh, you know, actually calling out um, lead in the document because you're kind of we're kind of picking winners and losers there. So that's one comment. Um, second is under transportation section four. Um, I didn't notice. You know, there's all these different ways to encourage alternative transportation modes. Um, I didn't see anything in here about. Uh, transportation within the harbor. Um, I think the, under the shuttles section, it may make sense to to have some discussion regarding harbor taxis or harbor shuttles, given the increased development along the harbor. For example, Edo Village, places like that. Um, uh, that's that's an important part of our city, and there's no real discussion of that. Um, Under water conservation, um, there's a list of different ways to conserve water. Um, I think one that's that's missing is um, you know uh, smart water technologies. Um, there's various um, components that are used in the commercial area, um, including smart valves and things like that to reduce um, uh, water uses. Um, I think those should be included. Um, 
I have some other minor comments, but I'll just include those in an email to the staff. Um, Commissioner Ketting, do you have any comments? Yes. Um, again, it's, it was a very comprehensive report. Thank you and all your committee. Um, I guess the biggest question has to be related to what on introduction page seven, the first step in, is the council going to establish uh, the important, how are they going to establish the importance of sustainability in the city? Staff mentioned whether it's a policy, an action plan, or a guideline, as I want to call it, that I think it is today for the most part. So, you know, handcuffs can be put on, and you could require this, uh, all these items. It is going to increase costs for everybody, whether it's a public facility project or a private or combination. Um, not to repeat Chairman's comments, which I agree with on the building and development side. Number two, um, first bullet point, review fees. Consider not just city costs, but activities in the city. Are there gonna be reduced fees, do you think, for attaining certain levels, giving the carrot and the stick? Um, same thing with third bullet point, uh, or second, more flexibility, which are good ideas, but you can't usurp the UBC, the state building code. Create fast track. We all, if on the development side, want to go faster. There's no definition of how that is, and how do you define that? Um, and that, again, might be something very valuable if you could expand on it. Does that push somebody else's back? Maybe it should. I think that needs to be clarified. Um, same thing the chairman said on lead buildings. It's not a requirement in most cities. Uh, it's encouraged greatly. And so maybe review fees, fast track, and the like. Um, for doing lead items, it, it might convince somebody to do a building. Um, and again, costs may go up. Uh, I'm going to go back up at the top of page nine, that last bullet point, salute awards and prizes. That would be a great, the annual mayor's dinner would be a great time to, you know, hand somebody a ribbon or a medal or a trophy. Um, let's see. Um, jobs, housing balance. That's the first time I've seen that in any Newport document. How are we going to do that? Is that going to in incentivize somebody to do um, sustainable development. Um, we're pretty handcuffed on housing as we all have just recently been going through. So that needs to be expanded. Um, organic waste, the, it, there's a green uh, waste program. In my neighborhood, you, you have paper, glass, and plastic, and you have garbage. Debris. Uh, most cities, they have green waste. I didn't want to add another bin, but I've got four of them already. Uh, I'm not sure how that works. So that's a, it, it is mentioned here, but it doesn't go very far. Bio, uh, consider biocomposting systems. If we were in a rural area, it'd be great. You could go there and get buckets full of stuff to put in your gardens, but I don't know where you'd do it outside, it, other, otherwise in the county. Um, on uh, transportation four, preferred parking. I wrote down electric boats. You know, we're one of the, the best communities in California, if not the United States, with electric for boats. So there should be some benefits there. You wrote bike valet. How about Duffy boat valet? Or I shouldn't use the word Duffy, but electric boat um, valet. There's a couple of restaurants on the bay that will do it. If you pull up, they'll mm -hmm. park it. And, but maybe encourage that more and more. That's a great idea. Um, make bus travel more attractive to the airport, I wrote. And there's no mention of that. It'd be nice to take something into the airport and get out conveniently. And we're not talking going into LA or going into the Bay Area. We're talking Newport. Um, shuttles, city sponsored Uber and Lyft. Maybe the city pays a little bit of the fee to encourage people to use it for certain mileage, you know, not from here to Laguna Beach, maybe. Um, 
Am I hogging? No, no. no. Organic waste, we already t talked about a little bit. Um, beach signage, uh, ex uh, this is a tough one, expand beach parking lots. I know it's probably not possible, but maybe they could do valet at the beach and they tandem park. Uh, Again, have a, have a, the shuttle, uh, these shuttle vans that I'm seeing on Peninsula go down to Big Corona Beach down in there because oftentimes you get down there, you got to do a U-turn, go back out and go park on the street. Um, shorten commutes. This was a good one. Closer people are to work, the less they have to drive. I guess uh, that goes back to the uh, area around Fashion Island. People are going to live there and walk to work. So that's already in coming into vogue. Uh, That's the main reason we approved Museum House, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to skip a few of the other ones, but because they're so much fun to look at and comment. Turf removal. My, I brought this up before. The best turf removal example in this city would be to take the grass out right behind here. You know, it, show the city, show the public how you can do it. There was also something in here about uh, paying, getting uh, fees, re uh, paying people to reduce that. I did my backyard last year, and it, I had to go through the water district somewhere else, and it took six months of paperwork, and then the price went up. To get your credit? Yeah, to get the credit. And, and I couldn't get anything done until it was all approved, and four people had to come and measure it and look at it, and yee, yee, yee. Um, they got to make that faster, and uh, they ran out of money. There's no more, there's no more, you know, so what's the incentive? But by the way, we reduced our water a lot by taking out that yard. No, I'm not going to keep going. <laughs> Do you have any more? Yeah, don't worry about no, it. No, no, seriously, keep going. No, 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 no. No, please don't, finish. Don't, don't, don't. I'm not saying anything, so please no. finish. <laughs> I'm enjoying this. Uh, <laughs> um, I'll come back. I'll, I'll let somebody else speak. I, I've got a few. Um, I agree with all that you said. On the lead um, comment, uh, and I just gave Nancy my, my note cards from my lead test, my flash cards, so if anybody wants them. Will they cheat? I made them myself. <laughs> I studied for three months and uh, failed by one point. But anyway, um, the lead thing is really is expensive. I mean, it, it's a great criteria, but there's other ways to look at that, uh, the certification for LEED, having been involved in a LEED project, it's one thing to do the implementation of the actual LEED items, be it air conditioning, lighting, glass, all the things you do, and then to get it certified, you pay consultants armfuls of money to get that certification. So the concept is good, but there's other, as a, a chairman had mentioned, there's other ways to get there that would comport with your list. I, I guess my other um, deal would be, uh, what was my other? Oh, uh, solar water. It wasn't on your list. We talked about it before. It's very inexpensive, and it can be done for all the pools and spas in, in Newport Beach, which there is a lot. It's a very inexpensive way to get the ambient water temperature up, even in the winter. Uh, you can get it up over to 70, 80 degrees, and then if you turn on your heater, to 90 to 100, it's much easier to heat. Um, and same with a lot of these larger homes now have uh, recirculating water systems. It fits perfectly into solar water. So um, those are kind of my comments. And I guess my other question that was brought up regarding Title 24 and the UBC code, being a contractor type, have your list of items here, which is comprehensive and, and well thought out. Have you looked at that against Title 24 and the UBC to see how much is already being done now with our current code in California? I mean, we are the leading state for sustainability already, not to say we can't do more, but you might look at that against the building code because a lot of it is incorporated already in Title 24, specifically lighting. Thank you. Any other comments? Okay. Um, all right, so you took some notes, so maybe some responses and we can have a discussion. First of all, thank you. Oh, great comments. And the lead, I think that's just carelessness on my part because um, what we were thinking of in terms of that is lead or equivalent, meaning go for the standards but don't necessarily, I agree, sometimes it's unnecessary. When we did Marina Park, 
uh, community center. Uh, we were almost at the end, and all of a sudden, the things had changed, and it was going to be another umpty um thousands of dollars to get the thing. And I, you know, no, we weren't getting the bang for the buck. So that's we still have a great green building. So I agree with that. Um, I think your comments are, are terrific. I thank you so much for taking the time to go over it. And uh, I can't wait to get home and, and write it down before I forget how to read my own handwriting, which is often the case. So if you're, you're going to send your comments also to staff then, uh, is that, or how is it? And it's on tape. Oh, okay. That's right. All right. Great. Thank you so much. No, there, I, sorry, I got it. Here was the other one I was going to go after. The schools in our community. You know, they're probably the worst violators, you know, of windows and leakage of air conditioning through doors and just the equipment they have, because they were built a long time ago. They could be, there could be a plan going after the school district to bring that into sensibility, sustainability. So, mm -hmm. there you go. Any other responses from staff? So what I would propose to do is, um, Based on your comments tonight, I can go ahead and write something up that would represent the, the Planning Commission's comments you want to forward on to the City Council. Sounds like some of you might have something to add to that, so I can circulate that, that write-up for you to uh, modify as you wish, and that way you could have a collective response that would be forwarded on to the City Council. Does that sound acceptable? Yes. Okay, thank you. So looking at these parameters at the end of the staff report so consider the need for the plan does the city need a comprehensive strategy to incorporate sustainability practices into city functions and promote such practices in the private sector are current city procedures and state requirements sufficient so are we saying that um, <coughs> this, this this sustainability plan is is necessary or not I think it is I think it could be modified it could be tempered it could be you know there's a lot of holes in it if it's so long and complicated people aren't going to dig through it that's so i think it it needs to hit on the basics and get down to staff interpretation of it i mean you're going to deal with people coming in over the counter and, and you're going to your staff and the building staff are going to say you know if the council agrees they're going to if they say yes we want People to come in under that silver or bronze or what's the lowest level lead now? I forget. I think it's bronze. 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 You know, and, and, and for that we're going to do the following for you. And then if the more you do, the better it is. You know, a lot of that. If you've ever done the analysis, you put in bike racks. Those you, there's tons of low hanging fruit on this. You get all these points. Then the hard one comes: the windows, the carpet. I mean, you know, the air conditioning, the, the insulation, the, the, the window. You know, yada yada. So. Um, it, I'm sure you're getting it now, a lot of the ways, but I, th I think if it's, if it's a report this big, I think it's going to be forgotten. It's got to be sensible. We never thought that this was the final plan. We thought this was simply a template to start with, okay. and obviously we wanted staff to have lots of input, but we also felt it was an economic frankly, to ask staff to comment a lot if suddenly then the council said, we don't want to do it. We don't want to waste time and, and money for that. But if the council does go ahead, then obviously we would want staff to really go over with a fine-tooth comb. Well, this, okay, you, you brought up one other thing that sits in my craw, and that is you mentioned urban design and architectural. Um, is it time that Newport Beach has an architectural review committee or takes a look at buildings, paint colors, roof materials, you know, to say, you know, it just doesn't seem to be the right product for this community. You know, I think we saw one recently, a car dealership. I'm just saying that was in here, and, and that might be a road that the council doesn't want to go down, or I mean, I've developed all over California, and there's some small little podunk communities that you have to sit in front of a design and review committee and you wonder where they got their degrees, but you had to please them and you had to get it done. Then it went to the planning commission, then it went to the council. Their community right next door has one, Huntington Beach. Coastal Mates. I mean, they go on and on. They're all over. Just a thought, because I saw it in here and I figured I'd tell you. That stomach just turned when I said that. 
the, the city attorneys did. I just had that last week with the city of Goleta design review board because I'm I went through there for the, uh, seven years that lighting design the, review committee. Uh, We should. Yeah, I'm, I definitely wouldn't be a fan of an architecture review committee. But um, I, with with that comment aside, I I 100% agree with all the other comments that the other commissioners made. Um, you know, the building code continues to be updated and implementing a lot of these items um, that we talked about. Uh, I deal with it every day, and we're rushing to get things in the plan check so we don't have to comply with the updated building code because the architects have to figure it out and um but there's so there's challenges so i think there's already a lot of stuff that's there um again the the, the also the the regional water quality control board is always updating standards as well and so so i i think it's um the concept and the idea of this is 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 great and and but i think it really should be more tailored as a guideline um with incentives built in uh, for developers, for homeowners, for people to take these steps and really encourage them to do it because it may, may cost money up front to do it, but in the long run from an operating efficiency or standpoint, um, it, it, it might make a lot of sense for them to do it. But So I think incentives really need to be well thought out. And, and there are maybe there are some specific examples, such as some of the ideas that uh, Commissioner Ketting brought up tonight uh, with like the school districts and, and really trying to get them to upgrade schools. Um, and, uh, you know, and I think if the city's going to come up with a list like this and, and guidelines um, to implement throughout the city, the city needs to be uh, a, a leader in doing that in public, public, uh, public right away, public facilities that the city owns and maintains. So um, they need to lead by example. Uh, those are my those are my comments. I actually con concur with everything you said there, uh, Commissioner Zach. It is shocking. It really is. So that means it must be true. Um, so I think with that, um, we don't have any action per se, right? Those are just comments. So uh, we're directed to. Uh, so is. is Staff going to formulate some recommendations um, and present those at the next planning commission meeting, so we can okay that before it goes on to city council. I think, based upon the level of detail that we're hearing tonight, I think I'll go ahead and provide you the written correspondences back, and provided that the comments I, that you update it with are consistent with what we've heard tonight, you won't have to bring it back here in a formal manner. We will? We will not. We will not, okay. So we'll go ahead and, and fine tune those comments um, via email and that if anything is significantly different, no, that would be a, a serial meeting. <laughs> we can't do that for the Brown Act. Um, so we will, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and circulate the comments to you that we've heard tonight in writing. And then, Sorry, maybe I'll just jump in here, Chairman yeah. Kramer. If it's the desire of the commission to see the comments again, we can bring them back. If not, I think staff has enough direction to just go forward at this point and not bring them back to the commission. Okay. I'm fine either way. And then, um, so, um, Nancy, you're, you know, are you going to reformulate the presentation or how, what are you going to do then? Because it seems like you're, you're kind of doing your own thing, staff. Are you guys working together? I mean, I'm a little right. confused. Right. Um, so. What I'm doing is, I mean, I'm attending all the meetings of the committees, so getting a, a good overview, and then I will be available to staff as far as here's what I heard and, and make any comparisons. And then it's a job of staff with, and I've volunteered my assistance as well, to sort of try to put all these different comments together for the council and just what exact form that will take, whether it will just totally be a rewritten plan that will go to them in terms of incorporating everything or whether we'll try to do an underline. I don't think we can do the underlining and sort of X out because there's five or six different groups that have commented and it would be a little confusing that way. So we'll probably just try to do the um, combination of comments where we see agreement and then highlight things where different groups have said, well, no, we don't like this 
type of thing. Um, so that's that's the approach we'll take. And as far as uh, the guidelines, as I said at the last meeting, this was always hopefully by carrots, by suggestion, uh, and not by the stick, because I do understand that there are costs associated to the city, to the individual, to the consumer, and we don't want to make it any more onerous, but we do want to provide the opportunities. So, so at the end of the day, uh, everything's going to be finished up between your committee and staff or a master document that's approved by by city council. Yes. Uh, and that master document will not come back to planning commission prior to going to, to council. Is that right, Michael? And that's correct, Chairman Kramer. Is, is that the way it's, it's supposed to be or not? If this is a planning document and we're- Council didn't give any specifics on that. They no. just said we'd like the various committees and commissions to review it. So they didn't. That's correct. That's and Mayor Gardner is correct. So what the council's asked for is the input of the planning commission. And I think that's what we've gotten over the last okay. two meetings. And it's been a sufficient detail that staff's been taking notes. And we can also collect your notes from you as well, um, Mr. Ketting, uh, and then proceed and pass that on to the city council. You have something else? So, yeah, just quick. So the council is aware of this been going on yes. and they somewhat encouraged the process. So otherwise they would have told you to cut it off at the pass. So now they're curious what it would be. What is this animal, right? Right. Okay. So we're just Very good. I'd hate to see you go all the way down, have it all bound and everything in a glossy front, and they say, mm, what's this? Hey, that's, we took the chance. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Good luck. Well, thanks for all your time. I know it's probably hundreds and hundreds of hours, so um, it's not easy to uh, um, you know, synthesize a lot of different people's opinions. So, uh, so thank you for doing that. Enjoy my flashlights. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Next item is motion for reconsideration. Next item is community development director's report. The um, city had another um, step towards getting our LCP certification at um, the Coastal Commission meeting this week where they adopted the findings for certification. So we expect to actually have um, our, our fully certified document in early next year. In um, regards to city council updates, the council does have two pending appeals. One is the planning commission's approval of the village inn, and the other is um, last meeting you approved the seven unit development Santa Ana cottages um, on the um, west end of town. That was also appealed by the neighbor. So um, the village inn is, is expected to be considered by the council at their first meeting in January, and um, we have not had a date set for the Santa Ana cottages. So who appealed the uh, village in? The neighbor, the, um, Mr. Michael Sullivan. Sullivan? Mm -hmm. That's all I have for you. Um, I do have the tentative agenda that I do want to talk about our January meetings. Um, as you see, our next meeting is not until January 19th. We do have two <laughs> meetings canceled. Um, however, the January 19th meeting is getting pretty long. So um, a couple of weeks ago, I did circulate an email asking for availability of holding a, an earlier meeting on January 12th. So I'm proposing to do is split the January 19th meeting in half and putting um, half of those on the, on the 12th. Um, I did not hear from all the compliant commissioners, but it does appear that we have a quorum of um, four, but I would like to see if I have a few more members. Mr. Ketting, you are available. Thank you, Commissioner Ketting. So um, I'll go ahead and email um, the commissioners again tomorrow to get a final count of that. So um, hopefully we can have that meeting. But that's all I have. Um, I happened to go down and get a phone call and ask to look at a little island house setback situation. Are you aware of that? There's, the, the gentleman came in and he wants to remodel and add on to it. He wants to keep the 10-foot ten, ten setback. This and is, uh, I looked at the house as well. This is the Barclay residence on Little Balboa Island on Park Avenue. And I didn't see it on here. There's a pending application and has not been scheduled for a meeting yet. It just recently came in. Um, we do have a setback determination. I just wonder why it even has to go to the Planning Commission. Because, it seems to be pretty benign. Right. It was for a setback determination, and um, it does require Planning Commission's approval. 
It's required to go to the commission? Yes. Based on? The setback, they're, looking, they're asking for a modification of their setback, basically. Right. It's, luckily, it's not called a variance, but what they're looking at is that um, the setbacks, we're talking in general terms so that we're yeah, not we're talking to a little, a We're getting into a little project. too much detail here. So. Okay. Yeah. Just, Just curious. Um, it's not under, yeah, I don't no, that, well, if you split the 12th and the 19th, maybe it could make it if they get all their stuff in order. Okay. Just curious. I mean, I'd personally rather just have one meeting that's longer, so my opinion. Um, does anyone else share that or not? Brenda, we can talk about whatever okay. works best for staff because we're here to serve. All right. Uh, with that, uh, announcements on matters that the Planning Commission members would like placed on a future agenda for discussion, action, or report. Request for excused absences. Well, everyone enjoy your Christmas holidays and we'll see you back in January. You made it well, by two minutes. We're gonna see you next week. Yeah, there's lunch. Are you gonna have okay. lunch? Okay, I'll try to be there. Meeting is adjourned. <laughs>